Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. My name's Neil and it's time for another episode of Would I Lie to You? We have completed our journey through the Bob Mortimer catalog, so it's time to explore some new comedians on this show. And to do that, we're going to go back almost to the very beginning. We're going back to series one, episode six. And I'm really interested about this episode because I know a couple of things. I know that the format of the show changed a little bit after the second series, that Rob Bryden came in in that third series as well. Um, so the show had a bit of a different feel, although I do believe that Lee Mack and David are the team captains all the way since the very beginning. So. It'll be interesting to see them with a different host. I don't know who the host is. I don't believe it's a familiar name to me. Although, let's be honest, a lot of British uh, comedian names aren't familiar to me. Um, but the main reason we're coming back to this episode is because it is the, fir the first appearance of Claudia Winkleman. Claudia is clearly the most recommended name I've received since I've started reviewing Bob. Once Bob was off the table, it feels like Claudia is the clear number two. I'm, I know nothing about her. I am fairly certain she's never been on Taskmaster. Bit of an inside joke, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty certain she hasn't. And um, I don't know, I, I, I understand she's a comedian, but I don't know if she's famous for anything else in the UK. And I'm very curious to learn more about her and what better way to learn about somebody to, than, than to see what kind of storyteller they are, how good a liar they are, what kind of crazy stuff they get up to in their life. So let's learn about Claudia Winkleman. This is episode six of series one of Would I Lie to You? Okay, the music's the same. Lee Mack looks a lot younger. So does David. And let's just call this video not HD. He's packing a punch, it's Harry Enfield. She's Harry packed Enfield. a lunch, it's Claudia Winkleman. Okay. And team captain, David Mitchell. Man, he's fresh-faced. She's practically royalty. It's Tara Palmer Tomkinson. He's got a Netto loyalty card. It's Dave Spikey. And their team captain, Lee Mack, your host, Angus Deaton. Welcome to What I Lie to You, the show where cheating and lying is not only allowed, but actively encouraged. Lying is part of everyday life for most people nowadays, as I was saying to George Clooney only last night in the bar. I have eaten a diamond. I didn't mean to. I was at a restaurant in Paris and a guy put it in my pudding and he was so rat ass by pudding he forgot to tell me and I ate the whole thing. <laughs> in restaurants, they don't prepare pudding at the beginning of the meal and allow you to have a look at it and pop a diamond in it oh, so that later genius. on none of this adds up. I'm sitting next to Quincy. He went <laughs> <laughs> So he gave them the and diamond. And then we had a row, and he got rat ass, and then I ate the diamond. End of. Right. <laughs> At what point did he remember? That it was on the way back to while we were walking along the Seine. <laughs> Still arguing. What, and then he went, the oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, there are a lot of holes in the story, but then, you know, maybe <laughs> Tara's just told it in a flaky way. Ah! <laughs> a whole ring? A diamond, yes, but a whole sure, ring or whatever? I don't think so. there were areas where it didn't make sense. The metal detector, let it go. I bet you it's true. It's true. Oh, wow. Sorry. I can identify any breed of dog just by hearing it growl. <laughs> <laughs> I've been able to do it for five years. <laughs> Lie. First Lie. of all, I listened to the bark and then I looked away. <laughs> And then I heard the bark, and then I learned that bark. Do you a demonstration of a rock fighter. Woof! <laughs> <laughs> he can't imitate dogs. He just can recognise the growls. OK, what's this one? Woo 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 woo! <laughs> it's a rock fighter. Could you name ten types of dog fruit? Yes. Golden Labrador? Yes. Black Labrador. <laughs> Rottweiler. Lie. Lie. Beautiful. 
I feel like they're going at a faster pace this time. Uh, clouds were once removed from the sky so that Paul McCartney could perform Good Day Sunshine at a concert. What you do is, you can either fly a plane over it and drop silver, yeah. silver oxide on it, or you can shoot a rocket into the cloud. You can basically steal other people's rain if you do that. The cloud's going on. Oh, is this a dream? <laughs> I think it's true. But why would he move the cloud? It's like at my 21st, I didn't is. want clouds, so my dad had them removed. What? <laughs> Did you honestly, at your 21st birthday, get a cloud moved? No, I got more than one. There was... The whole sky just over our house in Hampshire was blue. Yeah? Just to match my dress. You spoiled bitch! <laughs> Tara, why have you started lying to your own teeth? <laughs> lying lying is, a, is a skill that's useful in this game, but you found a way of using it that doesn't help you. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to turn up to watch him sing Good Day Sunshine, whatever the weather. Why is it worth his while to spend $40,000 getting rid of the clouds? You're going to ask the crowd, look, I've got 25 grand here. We can either get rid of the clouds or it's vodka for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really have it? Yeah, you could do it. You don't need a big old golf stream. Just a little plane. Yes. It's true. I think it's eminently plausible. What do you think, Tara? What are we well, saying? I think it's true. Okay. He mustn't use my plane. <laughs> <laughs> Who... Who is this Tara? She's a, an odd one. Do you want to marry me now? <laughs> is she like... Is that a hint of irony? You are, without that, the most frightening person I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> is she like 38th in line to the throne or something like that? It is absolutely yeah. true. Well done. Please welcome this week's special guest person, Dave. And they did this right from the start, eh? I met Dave in 1990 when I passed out at the top of Mont Blanc. Mansion. No, I was actually on a photo shoot. I was at the top then. That's where I passed out because the altitude was so thin. And um, he helped me down. Where's Dave, Dave from? He's French. He's French. <laughs> okay. Contestants have gotten better at uh, of not giving up the lie early. Uh, this is Dave. All right, Dave. He's my um, <laughs> he's my old boss who taught me how to call bingo. I want you to talk bingo. I want to give you some numbers. Do it. Eighty-six. Eight, 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 what? Eighty-six. Eighty-six. Yes, that's in bingo. <laughs> no, it's not. It only goes up to seventy-five. Seventy-two. Uh, look at my shoe. Seventy-two. <laughs> Eighty-nine. Oh, look, it, the weather's fine. <laughs> yeah, the highest number in bingo is only 75. This is Dave, he's a mate of mine from down the pub, Colin Bestie. Um, he makes £40,000 a year on pub trivia machines. Makes 40 grand a year, a year. from... What's his favourite subject? He's just general knowledge, I think. Where does I think you're to... Oh, no. 37. <laughs> what is wrong with her? She's a terrible contestant. Does he declare his earnings to the revenue and customs? <laughs> If not, what's he doing on television? <laughs> I don't think any of them have met him. None of them yeah, it turns out to be Angus's nephew, is that what you're saying? I think it's Dave's mate. I'll take the trivia king. I think the most likely story is Lee's at the moment. And you don't seem to be considering Tara's at all? No. Lee, Lee, Lee buggered the bingo numbers. Wrong, I might. Not absolutely not, but I think if the claim was what she said to Dave. I think you're telling the truth. <laughs> Tara could be. could be playing this game on a higher level than any of them. <laughs> <laughs> could be, isn't. I'm Lee's ex boss, and I taught him how to be a bingo caller. Is, is bingo completely different in the UK? Because in North America, there's only 15 numbers per column, and it only goes up to 75. Are you still maintaining that he's not telling the truth? <laughs> If you interrogate him enough, he's going to break down and go, Oh, I knew I could not keep this up! <laughs> Man, this is like an episode where Lee actually told the truth. This week, our area of specialist interest is tomorrow's world. This is a new segment. One episode showcased a toaster connected to the internet that burns a weather forecast into your toast. It dials up the internet and your toast pops out with a cloud, sun or raindrop symbol on it. Oh, okay. Not a very detailed weather forecast. Yeah, this sounds like an ITV weather forecast, why I'm doing it. Shall we? Yeah, I think it's really good. You think it's true? Yeah, definitely. Tara, you've got a Is machine that dries you when you come out of the shower. Yeah, yeah I do actually. How do you know that? Uh, what, what's it's very unhygienic to dry with towels, apparently. Right. How many people die of towel-related diseases? <laughs> <laughs> this is a level of 
hygiene that clearly doesn't actually matter. No, no. I didn't design my bathroom. Someone else put the air in. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this woman? Oh, she's annoying. That's true. Yeah, because he follows I've got him under my spell. <laughs> true. Yay! It's a truth. She's drunk. She's got to be drunk. Tomorrow, it is going to be cloudy. That's, That's weak. <laughs> that is really shit. I imagine how it would be, and I imagine it about ten times better than that. You know, I think it's brilliant. That could become addictive every morning. Oh, I wonder what it's going to be. Don't open the curtains. Let's wait. <laughs> you, that doesn't sound like you have to struggle to make things fun. <laughs> That's, I can't wait till a vague shape on my toes gives me a shit idea what the weather might be like. <laughs> then I'll open the curtains. It'll be different, and that'll be fun. <laughs> I once pushed a man in a lake for following me, shouting, only me. <laughs> that, that's clearly relevant to who he is, but I don't know what that is. He was in my private area, if you know what I mean. I don't, you know. Does a man so get really whacked? Yeah, he was in the lake and yelling. What was he yelling? Only me, drowning! We would know about it if he'd push somebody. Good point, Tara. Yeah, the man who fell that. in the lake would dine out on it, you liar. <laughs> it is a... Lie. Lie. I bumped off school to go to London with a boy called Dick Whittington. Was he really called Dick? It was Richard Whittington, obviously. Did you call him Dick? Well, he did. <laughs> obviously. You see, his uncle knew the Beatles. They were on doing a public, public appearance in Carnaby Street, opening I don't know what. And if we went down, he could get us a ticket and we'd get in and we'll meet the Beatles and he'll sign his autograph. Well, they just asked what was the name of the fish and chip shop. Yeah. I can't believe that yeah. a man is sitting here saying that he went with his mate Dick Whittington who owned a chip shop to London to see the Beatles. And your question is, <laughs> what was the chip called? <laughs> I don't know is the answer. That doesn't help right. you. So I it's all down to you, Harry. Okay, let's say lie. It's a lie. It's, it's true. It's absolutely nonsense. Oh. Uh. Claudia. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Well, yeah, finally. I wrote to Jim Will Fix It asking to meet ABBA. They wrote back offering the chance to see how the blue bits were made in cheese. I'll tell you for why. Because somebody was interested in the cheese. I'd like to throw in the word Stilton. That person had a cold, and so they had an opening. They had an area of the factory, or where they make cheese, with the cows. The cows provide the milk, they don't manufacture it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but... Well, I politely declined. Well, you Claudia, you're yeah. such a bad liar, what? I don't believe a word of it. I never met Abba, and I didn't meet um, the cheese people. I think uh, Claudia might be lying. Okay. It is actually true. Ah, you're so good! It's really true. It's uh, David's team who have proved themselves to be uh, superior uh, human beings, having crushed Lee's team 9-8. <laughs> well, I'm glad I saw that, just so that I have it as a, a comparison. The, cho the show's evolved quite a bit. I mean, the, the, the theme music's the same, but I, I never thought I'd say Rob Bryden is a big improvement. Um, I, I find I found Angus to be basically it, it, it felt like he was a, a comedy um, a comedian doing a news seg a news report. Um, you know we have a show in Canada called This Hour Has 22 Minutes um, with a bunch of fake news reporters doing fake news stories about the the goings on in Canada and he sounded like one of them you know vaguely uh, reminiscent of a weekend update on Saturday Night Live but but he's just reading off a script he he, he never uh, never ad-libbed a thing and yes they got more lies in but they spent no time in any big story you know I, I feel like one of the real real highlights of the show in its modern format is you know if there's if there's a crazy story this the, the show will spend 10 minutes on it you're not you're not gonna have Bob Mortimer say I, I do my own dentistry and cut him off in 60 seconds but in this format they might have and I also feel like they do a better job of selecting contestants I don't know who Tara Palmer Tompkinson is I'm just I only know her name because I'm reading it here on the credits um, she is not well suited for this game. She, I'm 90% sure she's drunk, and if she's not, then she's even more annoying. Um, just loud and rich and uh, not really trying to play the game well at all. I'm a little disappointed we only got the, the one quick uh, lie from Claudia, but I 
But she managed to fool everybody and quite convincingly. So I am uh, looking forward to seeing another episode with her. So that will be uh, the next one I check out. Until then, take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>